The RockShox Super Deluxe and Fox Float X2 are the most popular aftermarket rear air shocks on the trail, both of which offer ridiculous performance and adjustability. But what are the real differences between these shocks? And which is best for you? Stay tuned and you'll find out. When it comes to aftermarket air shocks for mountain bikes that like to go up and down hills, the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate and Fox Factory Float X2 are two of the most popular rear air shocks on the trail. Both of these shocks offer amazing performance, great long-term durability, and good looks to boot. Damn! While we always refer to the Fox Float X2 as the best air shock on the market, the Super Deluxe comes ridiculously close and may even be a better option for some riders, which we'll discuss in a minute. But before we pin these shocks against one another, let's do an overview of each individual shock to get to know them better. The Fox Factory Float X2 is the premier shock offering from Fox with tons of adjustment and aims at the most performance possible. There are two models, one with a climb switch and one without, but all other adjustments are the same between both versions. The climb switch model offers a two position switch to either run the shock in open mode to go down the hill and a locked out position to really stiffen up the compression to go up the hill. And the highlight of this shock is the independently adjustable high and low speed compression and independently adjustable high and low speed rebound. These adjustments mean you can extremely fine tune how the shock feels. The air can's bottom out resistance can be tuned with these two piece volume spacers and a maximum of either two or three spacers depending on the size of your shock. The X2 is made in a wide array of sizes to fit most mid travel trail bikes, downhill bikes and everything else in between. A common misconception that we often hear from customers is that the Float X2 is just a downhill shock, but this just isn't true. Sure, it looks a bit more beefy and different than the conventional trail bike shock, but the extensive adjustability of the X2 makes it possible to make your trail bike, all mountain bike, enduro bike, or downhill bike suspension feeling perfect. Then there's the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate. This shock offers a two position climb switch to ride either fully soft and open for the most sensitivity or locked out for climbing. That was technically the wrong way, but whatever. Um, it also has adjustable low speed rebound and low speed compression to adjust how soft and sensitive the shock feels in open mode. The air can's bottom out resistance can be tuned with stackable tokens, allowing multiple tokens in the can at once. This shock is available in pretty much every size out there to fit on short travel trail bikes all the way up to downhill bikes. Plus, there's an additional upgrade that RockShox offers. It's on Henry's bike back here, and that's the Magnag air can. Now, if you install the Super Deluxe on your bike and wish you had more mid-stroke support, then you can upgrade your air can to the Magneg, which is super simple to install. Basically, the Magneg increases the shock's negative air chamber volume and is designed to increase mid-stroke support while retaining all of the small bump sensitivity. This allows you to tune your negative air chamber with up to four bands. We're stoked that RockShox offers the Magneg upgrade since it adds just another level of adjustments to make the shock work better for those riders who desire a more supportive ride feel. So now that we're familiar with each shock's features, let's pin these shocks head to head. First, we'll cover the setup procedure, then we'll compare the performance on the trail, and finally, the value. I've been riding a Float X2 for several years now, and I've grown very familiar with the crazy good performance you get with this thing. When I got my newest bike, a Da Vinci Spartan, it came with the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate. And honestly, I was prepared to ride the bike with this shock and have the urge to swap it out for a Float X2 after just a couple rides since I mentally had the X2 as my benchmark shock. However, that wasn't the case, surprisingly. First off, the setup time took about half as long as it would with a Float X2. The X2 generally takes me about eight to 10 rides to get super dialed, but the Super Deluxe only took about four rides to get dialed, which was pretty convenient. This is because the Super Deluxe has two less external adjustments compared to the Float X2. On the trail, the Super Deluxe has crazy good performance all around. The small bump sensitivity is amazing, it's super consistent, and all around the performance is far above average and extremely impressive. I was beyond stoked with this shock and had pretty much written off going with the Float X2. Well, at least for a few weeks. 
After riding the bike with the Super Deluxe for a few weeks and getting fully comfortable on my new setup, I did notice one thing. I wanted my high speed rebound to just be one or two clicks faster, but since you can't adjust that from the outside of the shock, I was left to either have Russ install a new shim stack at the shop for me or go with the Float X2 to gain that adjustment. We tried to source a tuning kit for the shock from RockShox, but at this time they are totally unavailable. So since we wanted to do a comparison video on these two shocks and also potentially fine tune my rear shock setup even more perfect, I installed a Fox Factory Float X2 on my bike. This was my first time on the brand new 2021 model of the X2, which has just been redesigned. And holy crap, this shock is awesome, but more on that later. After spending a few rides getting the shock set up, I was able to set every parameter exactly how I wanted and was able to get the rear suspension 100% dialed. This made me realize that with the Super Deluxe, I was at about 90% dialed, and that extra adjustability of the X2 helped me easily squeeze out that last 10% of performance I was wanting. So in a nutshell, the Super Deluxe Ultimate is easier to throw on your bike and ride, and the adjustments are capable of getting your rear end feeling about 90% perfect. And the Fox Float X2 has a more involved setup procedure which requires some confidence in suspension tuning or the will to learn, and the adjustments are capable of getting your rear end feeling 100% perfect. Okay, so here we are today. I have both a Super Deluxe Ultimate and Fox Factory Float X2 that I set up as perfect for me as possible. So which one performs better? After logging quite a bit of trail time and running these shocks back to back to back, I can confidently say that both of these shocks offer top shelf performance and one isn't necessarily better, more so each are just different and better for different types of riders. Comparing how these shocks feel is just like comparing a top tier Fox fork to a top tier RockShox fork. The top tier fork offerings from both brand offer best of the best performance, but the Fox just feels slightly more traction-y, while the RockShox feels slightly more active and poppy. And those same guidelines apply to their shocks as well. The Float X2 feels like you get a little more traction overall, while the Super Deluxe feels a little more active and poppy. The X2 feels like it absorbs every little bump a little better, and the Super Deluxe feels like it's a little more inclined to use its stroke more, resulting in a little more pop. And when I say a little, I'm talking small differences that many riders would never even notice. You can, of course, tune either shock to feel a bit different, but those are their natural personalities due to how they're designed. And it may sound like I'm doing a lazy review, but seriously, when it comes to high-end shock performance, both of these shocks are amazing when it comes to small bumps, big bumps, smashing through chunky stuff, hitting drops, and everything in between. The performance is so close, in fact, that I had a damn tough time planning out this video because the shocks feel so freaking similar after having them set up properly. Seriously, this is probably one of the hardest comparison videos I've ever made. In the last section, we talked about all of the pros of each shock's tunability, but now we wanted to touch on the potential cons of each shock's tunability, which ultimately affects the shock's performance. If you're confident in adjusting suspension with high and low speed compression and rebound, then you'll be able to make either of these shocks work at their full potential. But what if you aren't confident in suspension setup? Well, if not, then there's a chance you might just start turning knobs while not knowing what they do. In this case, the Super Deluxe can end up feeling bad, but the Float X2 can end up feeling downright terrible. This is because there are two more knobs to adjust on the outside of the X2 compared to the Super Deluxe, and randomly turning four knobs is worse than randomly turning two knobs. So overall, if you aren't super comfortable adjusting suspension and aren't inclined to learn, there's a greater possibility that you make your bike feel terrible since there's two more knobs to adjust. So both of these shocks offer amazing performance, which is sure to make every rider happy. The X2 is just capable of a little better performance if you're good with suspension tuning or have the will to learn. All right, next let's compare the value of each of these shocks and then finally figure out which shock is best for you. The Fox Factory Float X2 is the top shelf air shock on the market and sells for $669. 
the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate comes a bit more affordable and sells for $499. So is the X2 worth the 25% price increase over the Super Deluxe Ultimate? Besides that little bit of extra performance the X2 is capable of, it's also more versatile from the amount of adjustments it has. The Super Deluxe Ultimate comes with an off-the-shelf tune or medium compression and medium rebound. The high-speed rebound and high-speed compression are set internally with shims inside of the damper. You've probably heard the term custom tune when it comes to rear shocks, as bike manufacturers will often have suspension companies use a custom tune on the shocks that they install on their complete bikes that are tuned to work best with their suspension design. This means if you wanted to change those settings, like how I wanted to change my high-speed rebound slightly faster, you'd need to have the shock custom tuned. Or if you have a frame that works best with a different tune, then the off-the-shelf tune may leave you with less than optimal performance. With the Float X2, every parameter can be adjusted externally, and you can easily move the shock between different frames, assuming that they use the same shock size, and simply adjust the knobs accordingly so no custom work is needed. Now, technically, Fox offers three different internal compression tunes for these, but the range of adjustments on the X2 is so wide that we rarely ever have customers desire switching them. I don't actually think I've heard that a single time from anyone that's bought a shock from us. Literally the day after we filmed this video, Rock Shocks released more bike-specific shocks that come with the manufacturer recommended tune installed. So if you have a stump jumper, high tower, etc., then you'll get the Super Deluxe with the tune best suited for your bike. The full list of available bike-specific Super Deluxes is available on our website. But still, if you get one of these bike-specific shocks, you are going to get the best tune for your bike at the moment. But if you do try to move that shock over onto a different bike with a different frame and different suspension design, then it's still not going to work great and you might need to do some custom work to get the most performance out of your shock. This is a point that most shops would never bring up as it's pretty nitpicky, but we're all about that high performance suspension, so we wanted to mention that so that we get you a shock that's both good for now and good for later. All right, now on to the big question of the day. Which shock is best for you? We've put together some simple guidelines to help you decide which of these shocks is best for you by taking every aspect of both shocks into consideration. If you're confident with suspension tuning and want the absolute best performance possible from an air shock, go with the Float X2. You'll be able to get your bike 100% fine tuned and you're going to be extremely happy with your choice. But if you want a shock that performs incredibly well, is more affordable, and you're totally satisfied having your suspension feel 90% perfect, then go with the Super Deluxe. There will be less worrying about setup and fine tuning, more time focused on riding your bike, and the performance is still pretty incredible. Also, if you go with the Super Deluxe Ultimate and want more mid-stroke support, you can add the Megneg Air Can upgrade like Henry did, which sells for 90 bucks, bringing that whole kit and caboodle to 589. The upgrade is worth it on certain bikes and for certain riding styles. For me, I was pretty happy both with and without it on my bike, but we have heard from many riders that either having it or not made things way better on their bike. That upgrade really comes down to which bike you're on and your personal preferences. Well, there you have it. We compared shocks. Now, which of these shocks would you pick? Let us know in the comments below this video. We'd really love to hear. We've got both of these shocks in stock in all sizes. So if you're ready for a rear shock upgrade and want one of these guys, click this link right here. Head over to thelostco.com. Pick out a new shock. Free shipping in the USA. All right. Until next time, we're going to keep comparing bike parts for you guys. Happy trails. I'm taking a nap.